Hi everyone, today we have a new video review and as you can see this time we are going to talk about fresh release from IBG models and this is a kit in 170 second scale, of course it copies the armored vehicle, as you can see it's a DAC Mark 1, it's a British armored car and it might be an interesting build for all fans of this size of the models. Of course we have a commercial sample here so it means you will get exactly the same stuff as what you'll see in this video review, so as you can see we have quite small box here as comparison with my hand, we have really nice box art here and the kit number is written there it's 72144 so uh, first of all I have to say that this model will be also available in some other versions so today we are dedicating the video to this mark 1 version here on the side you'll find uh, some other kits we reviewed them as well and you can find it easily on our YouTube channel and also here we have the address of the manufacturer while on the opposite side you can see uh, four marking options which are green colored vehicles but still you can play with the color modulation and it's uh, something to let's say invent your own methods as well. So here as you can see we have plenty of space inside and everything is packed into ziplock bags so I'm going to open them one by one and we will check them together. So first of all is the Spruce C and it was packed into a separate plastic bag so let's zoom in and here we have the two red parts as you can see overall molding quality looks quite fine and maybe we can zoom in even closer so that's the maximum I can show you but if we flip over this part here you can see that we have some nice promoted elements as well so it's just a matter of careful assembly and maybe also bringing out all of these features and of course it will greatly depend on your weathering skills but I know some Madores who just build the clean vehicles, if we can say so, because they prefer such appearance. Next we continue with this Pru H. So here we have the one piece turret section as you can see. And this is a really great thing because basically you can get the right alignment without any unnecessary actions. And here we also have the separate hatches. I'm not sure about the hatches because I think we do not have the interior here. So if you plan to open the hatches, there will be just an emptiness inside. But maybe for some others it will be enough. Maybe they have some figurines to place in the turret, then it actually a useful thing. And here you can see that we have some internal features promoted here. So maybe that's also a nice thing to get in a 170 second scale armor kit. Next we continue with the storage box and also some machine guns for this model. So storage box is molded as a single piece part without the bottom section. I guess the bottom section will be installed separately. But overall I like such design because again it makes it easier to assemble and the final appearance looks more convincing in comparison with the uh, assemblies which should be built out of several sections. Next we continue with the sprue Q. So here we have the plastic wheels and of course the plastic wheels it's a great advantage of this kit. No rubber, no vinyl, it's just the normal plastic even though here we have the tires without the sag effect but I would rather prefer such thing in comparison with the typical vinyl offering. And by the way here we also have some promoted uh, tire features which is quite an unusual feature for a 170 second scale. I mean in 135 scale we see this not that often and here we get it in a really tiny size as you can see this wheel fits on my fingertips so that's why I'm saying it's quite tiny and also those features are present from both sides so manufacturer did not skip on the details just because they will not be visible on the finished model okay so we move this sprue aside and we go to the next plastic bag so here we have uh, four plastic sprues I guess some of them will be identical because some of the parts will have to be replicated. For example, here we have the sprue G and this one is supplied in two pieces. Maybe I can do it this way so that you can see the front and rear at the same side. And as you can see, uh, we have here the brake drums. We also have some suspension elements. And overall molding quality is really nice. Uh, the size of these parts is quite tiny here. You can see comparison with my fingertip. So this is not a large uh, model and it will definitely require some skill from you because it will be a bit tricky to assemble with a bad eyesight for example and if we are talking about the pioneer tools 
here we have them on the separate sprue it's a sprue f i was just checking what we actually have here so that's the standard set of the shovel fire extinguishers and some minor items but again the molding quality is good and some of these items are molded together with the clamps this is something you cannot avoid in the scale in my opinion or you will have to deal with the p part so it's your choice and next we have the sprue D, so this sprue D is supplied also in two pieces and here we have the stowage boxes and overall they look quite fine as you can see they should be assembled out of several parts and by the way here we also have the details on the frontal section of these uh, boxes which is also quite great and again this design should be easier to work because basically you're combining two parts together not working with the separate panels um, which should be glued and aligned together. Next, last but not the least, is the set of the large plastic sprues. So, first one is the sprue A. And here we have some of the hull parts, as you can see, and also some of the suspension parts. Again, they are quite small, and I think in some cases you will have to use tweezers, because otherwise it will be nearly impossible to get them into the right spot. But I think if you are going on this adventure with a 170 second scale armored vehicle, you know what you are starting, and you should be ready for such things. But as you can see, even from the opposite side, we have some features, so it's really cool. And I think we have some interior details as well but we will also see more when we'll be uh, checking the assembly menu next we continue with the hull parts so here you have to work with the separate panels and if I zoom in a bit you can see that we have some of the suspension elements promoted which is really great because uh, well in this scale I think it doesn't matter if this uh, for example suspension springs or shock dumpers are molded separately uh, they will still look the same once you install them into the place and here by the way you can see also the interior so again we do not have a lot of stuff and as you might have noticed we have the doors the side doors pre-molded so you won't be able to open them on the model next we have the small sealed plastic bag which is detailed with the decals and p fret so i'm going to cut through it just give me a second and yes you will have to work with the p parts in 170 second scale i think this is something what is traditional for uh, ibg models so that's why if you would like to have the nice features and use all of the items supplied in the kit you should be ready to work with those items so we are talking about the unpainted P fret and as you can see some parts are quite tiny, some of them will require some bending. So be sure to have the P bender because otherwise it's uh, well nearly impossible and very hard to work with uh, bending these parts and keeping them in this place and also not losing them to the carpet monster. What I'm holding in the hand right now is the tech mod uh, decals and as you can see we have a set of the various symbols of course there are no interior symbols whatsoever at least I do not see them so uh, those symbols will be applied only on the exterior surfaces. I was just checking the quality overall and it looks quite nice. And my previous experience with the uh, decals from uh, TechMod and from IBG is quite positive. So that's why I'm sure that you have the same thing here. And next we have the assembly manual. So this one is printed in color. It's a large brochure. So I'm going to close the lenses a bit so that the white will not be that blinding and now you can see this brochure so on the first page we have a short history note next we continue with the parts map here and assembly process so surprisingly we actually get some interior parts as you can see oh, we have the uh, paint scheme for the interior we have also colors chart and colors chart is supplied in several manufacturer designations but again for me the most surprising is that we actually get interior in this tiny 170 second scale vehicle and of course the assembly process starts with interior so here you can see that we are working on the four panel and then you will be working on the driver's position you also install various uh, panels here and there these are side panels for the hull section and well there is no engine 
keep in mind this because as you can see this uh, section is assembled with the 12 sketches but I think still it's quite impressive that we have the fighting compartment replicated in this size. Next we continue with the suspension parts there are more of them for example wheel axles and you also assemble the wheels themselves as you remember the brake drums were separate and they should be installed on the plastic wheels and uh, there are also plenty of P parts going here and there so um, pay attention to how they will be installed and of course you will have to uh, prime them before painting because otherwise it might be tricky to cover them with the paint layer. Next we continue with the various uh, storage boxes here and there around the uh, main hull and then we start working on the turret. So turret will be also detailed inside so that's really cool because it means that if you plan to open all of the hatches there will be something to show in the vehicle. And in this size, I think it will be very impressive, uh, especially with some weathering inside. Here you can see the first marking option from 1944-1945. And here we continue with two more vehicles. This one comes from 1943, another one from 1943, and one more here is from 1944. So, overall, I think this is a really great offer for modelers who are brave enough to work with interior kit in 172nd scale. It should be already available, you can get it even on official IBG website. And of course, I will be happy to hear your opinion, so if you have something to say about such tiny models with internals, write it here in the comment section below. And I will see you in the next video review as usual. Thank you for joining me today, and bye!